Charlie Jacoby. We're here at Crufts 2009, the biggest and the best dog show in the world. It's day three, gun dog day. The excitement is palpable. The noise is tremendous. We're going to be talking to competitors, to judges, to people behind the scenes and to a few well-known faces. We're going to be bringing you the very best of British gun dogs. And if you thought it was all about Labradors and Spaniels, you'd be wrong. Let's have a look at a few other gun dog breeds here today. I'm with Jan Andrews, Bass Council Member and Capo Di Capi of Gun Dogs. Jan, we're going to have a quick run through all the breeds here at Discover Dogs Crafts 2009, starting with the Slovakian Rough Hat Pointer. Ready, steady, go. Slovakian yes. Rough Hat Pointer. <laughs> um, very good on deer, tracking, um, new to the uh, UK, don't know much about them besides that. <laughs> For retrieving Balkans, right? Yes. Spaniel, American Cocker Spaniel. Yes, very good bird dogs. Um, again, fairly new to this country, but very nice little working dogs in the field. Popular with American presence. Yes, apparently. they are. <laughs> That's the Spaniel, Clumber Spaniel. Yes, um, they are a traditional breed, um, slow in the field, but absolutely fantastic um, uh, bird dogs. Popular with royal family, they presidents are, and royals. They are. Cocker, Cocker Spaniel. Fantastic. Oh. The, probably the best of all the little uh, Spaniels. They are brilliant little bird dogs. I've got one I'm missing here already. Yes. English Springer Spaniel. Fantastic. I would say that's my favourite in the field. Brilliant um, for flushing and retrieving, they will. Springing birds. birds. Yes, they are. Right, okay, field spaniel. What's the difference between that um, and a cocker? It's the more traditional one, the sort of slightly bigger and heftier, but they do exactly the same job as, as, as the others. Queen yeah. Mother had one when yes, she was young. Yes, she did. Okay, Irish water spaniel. Yes, fantastic. <laughs> uh, rather wild, uh, but do a fantastic job. Um, love birds. So good if you're good if you are actually in the field all the time. Not yes. so good for a, a no, sorry, that's Sussex right. spaniel. Special. Again, they're a specialist breed, quite heavy, jowly, <laughs> but very good. Welsh Springer Spaniel, they're yes, beautiful. They are beautiful, very, very popular indeed. They're very good little bird dogs. Okay, Spanish Water Dog, what knows that? I've got to own up, I don't know anything about them. <laughs> That's right, it's a lad. And the Weimaraner. Uh, they are lovely dogs, very good. Um, game, do uh, game bird dogs, um, slow, very elegant. Very elegant, very German, of course. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. The Quartals Griffin. Yes, very good deer dogs, um, brought in uh, for all sorts of game, but um, very good for tracking deer, because they've got rough coat, they don't mind going in underground. And they're Belgian, aren't they? Yes, they are. Lagotto Romagnolo. Oh, sorry, here's another one that I don't know Sounds like about. a pizza, there's a lovely <laughs> yes. dog. I'm all right, large Munsterlander. Munsterlander. They are lovely, very good. Um, they, they point as well as retrieve. Uh, very good game bird dogs. You need a big river, don't you? You do. The they Elbe do. or the Rhine. <laughs> pointer, English pointer. Yes, fantastic. Beautiful. On the hill, all sorts of uh, um, birds, but um, uh, great on the... Classic upland pointer. Yes, dog. they are. Okay, Chesapeake Bay Retriever. Lovely, wonderful. They love water. <laughs> <laughs> they do. You can drop them in those big bays. Yes, on the they East do. Curly coated. They love water too. Uh, very strong too, dogs. Uh, very nice. Don't see many of them. Quite an old breed, aren't yes, they? Yes, they are. And they have been flat coat. Flat coat. Oh, wonderful. Lovely. They can do all sorts. A very elegant breed, and they look fantastic in the in the field. One so far. Which is your favourite so far? Um, I would say the flat coat. Oh, very we're going to have the golden retriever, the yes, old gift of the gun dog world. Lovely. If you'd asked me before, I would have said this one. You would have done. OK. <laughs> right. Lovely. Yes. And then we have the Labrador retriever. retriever. That everybody knows. Fantastic. I've got three at home. Great in the field. Um, and uh, they do all sorts for me. Deer tracking and uh, game work. You're a rough birds. shooter. You're a rough shooter. Would you choose the golden retriever or the Labrador? A Labrador. OK. Uh, the Nova Scotia Duck Tolling Retriever. Yes, I have actually judged one of these in the ring and they are pretty little dogs and they are very good, getting very popular for retrieving. And what's the tolling story? What is that, how does that work? Uh, I'm not sure why they call them tolling. I, I heard that they, 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 they're supposed to bark and attract ducks. Oh right, OK. My dog barks, it scares ducks away. Yes, I know, probably mine would as well. <laughs> <laughs> OK, now we're back with Italians again, the Bracco Italiano. Yes, um, I don't know much about them. They rather look like the Spinoni but with um, smoother coats and they're supposed to be very good in the field, quite slow methodical workers. They look quite houndy, don't yes, they? Yes, they do. Really. We are in an area of foreign gun dogs at the moment. The Brittany, very pretty. They are very pretty and lovely little bird dogs. They're, I was thinking perhaps Brittany, Brittany, there's a link yes. there. By the English setter. setter. Absolutely the most fantastic. They look wonderful on the hill, pointing um, with grouse. 
Upland. So another Upland dog. And what yeah. does setter mean? Where does that come from? Um, uh, well, I think it's just because they set down point uh, and get ready to, to fight the bird. Yeah. The German long-haired pointer. Um, not a lot I know about them, but they have a good reputation for retrieving and pointing. And deer? Any good on deer? I uh, don't know anybody with them on deer. German short hair pointer, classic. Yes, it is, and they do everything really, and they're very nice tempered dogs and quite easy to train. German wire haired pointers, three. More difficult, but they are lovely dogs and do everything. Okay, GLP, a GSP, and a GWP, which would you choose for what you do? Uh, uh, GSP. GSP, I mean. that's the classic, isn't it? Right. Yes. We have the Gordon oh, Setter. They are lovely. Um, Black again, and brown. Um, and yes, they are lovely, elegant dogs. Pointers again, setters, um, they're lovely in for the grouse. And we've got the Hungarian visitor, we're going to have to speed up. Yes. Um, really at the end. <laughs> Beautiful, they are. Um, they do a bit of everything, pointing mostly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have it. I'm going wirehead visitor. Yeah, I don't really know a lot about them. <laughs> and the Irish red and white setter. setter. That, again, I don't know much about them. I guess them. we got. Well, Irish setter they obvious. are. Very fast and furious sometimes when they're like, not, not quite so steady as some of the Gordons and, and what have you. Similar to the Irish, the yes. Italian Spinoni. Uh, lovely, very slow, methodical. Um, and they look very nice in the, in the working in the in the field. Last one of all, the Kukkehudender. I don't know anything about them except they're Dutch, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Jan Andrews, thank you very much indeed. That was fantastic. Okay, thank, thank you. you. So that's the breeds taken care of. Now let's look at some of the action from the Basque Gamekeeper's Ring with Basque's very own Jamie Stewart. Next in the BASA Gamekeeper's Ring is the team challenge. Each of these individual teams are, are, are all gamekeepers or the dogs are owned by a gamekeeper and these are the, you know, the, the very heart and soul of BASA's Gamekeeping Ring. Lovely team of coggers, work hard, you know, real working dogs, bred specifically for, for woodcock shooting. And so we've got a much smaller animal than, than the Springer Spaniel. And not surprisingly, but uh, for the last two or three years, Cocker Spaniels have been the most popular dog in the UK. Now we get that through Kennel Club registration. That's not to say every one of those dogs will work in the, the sporting field, but they have knocked Labrador Retrievers off the top spot. And Gainer's just looking through the dog. You can see she's, she's looking at the dog's mouth. We're looking for a good, a good jawline. We don't oh, overshot or undershot would be a markdown. Checking the eyes, good healthy eye, no entropion or uh, retinal dysplasia. Going over the hips, looking for good confirmation, good muscle coverage on the back of the uh, top end of the shoulders and the, and the hips. You'll notice in the background we have the retrieval lane, which is uh, new and unique this year to the gamekeeper section. We'd like to pilot the, the possibilities of having a working element to uh, allow us the continuation of Doc Dogs for 2010 and beyond. Happy to be here. Happy to see the judge. The judge looking for all the, the, the distinct characteristics. You know, we're looking for a, a good gait, a good movement in the animal. When people ask about Cocker Spaniels, uh, sometimes have a tongue-in-cheek approach and say that if you're a masochist, get one. And they're very hard to train. If you get a good one, you've got a good one. Spaniels we have 14 dogs between my, my wife and my eldest son. We have 14 dogs and Springer Spaniels are the main culprits. Now we're into the Minochti shoot. This is one of the first representations from Wales. Uh, at GSPs, the German short hair, or, or rather wire hair pointers. Uh, these are fantastic representations. These dogs would win in any class of crafts. It's a family affair, the Jones family. Uh, the great supporters of the ring, they're here every year and invariably win something, either from a junior handler, team class, or individually. Again, Gina looking at that very important wire hair. It's bred specifically for, for rougher terrain. You know, we have the, the short hair, the smooth dogs, the Vimarana and the, the Vigla, who, who sometimes suffer in the UK. You know, climate's a bit hard for them, it's a bit cold and wet, uh, and certainly the terrain we ask the dogs to work in can be difficult. Beautiful movement. And this would be one of the dogs, sadly, this would be one of the, the sections we would lose if we were to lose the, the ability to show dock dogs. Now we have a, a large representation here in 2009, and our largest class is actually white hair pointers, when we have 56 bitches in one class. This is mum, dad, and two daughters. We have a clear passion for the, the wire here. Yeah. 
great temperaments, fantastic companion dogs, willing workers, will work all day. Again, just looking for a decent jaw. No oversize or overshot or undershot jaws. Good clean ears, nice eyes. His dad with a. I guess this is the principal dog in the, in the kennel. He's been here a few years, and he has one in his own right as well. Great character. Nice facial hair. He's got a beard that most men would be proud of. Fantastically versatile dogs, and we do use them in the UK for for sport shooting and picking up, but can of course be used for, for falconry. Very popular with the falconer. It's a pointing dog, so it will quest in front, find the game and wait for the falconer to launch the bird in the air before it's flushed. Nice mover. And the dog runs well too. <laughs> And last but not least, we have uh, we have the old man of the woods in many respects. We have Dylan Thomas. Dylan's been a great supporter of the BAC Gamekeeper Rings. He's been here as long as I have, which is the best part of, of 10 years. Last year's overall winner. He took home the, the big trophy from the main arena. And he's very keen that he replicates that this year. Gaynor Bailey's a very, very experienced judge. And she'll have another look at the dog. She'll have a firm idea in her mind now which which of the teams she has placed. Everyone trying the very hardest to get the maximum from the dog to catch the judge's eye. May just change the position from third to second or indeed first. To th I'm going to stick my neck out and say that uh, the Jim and Wirehair pointers from Monochte will be this year's winners. I've never seek to influence Ginner, but yeah, I think she's probably agreed. Fantastic. And she's had a good long hard look at these two teams of quite different spaniels and again it emphasises the difference between our Cocker and our Springer. So it's Manochti with the German wirehead pointers in the first place, Molland, Cocker second and the Bala, another Welsh, shoot third. A very pleased Jones family. It's the Jones family from the Monachity Shoes near Aberystwyth in Wales and they are the winners of the Gamekeeper team trophy this year, the Old Man of the Woods trophy. Why have you chosen this breed? The versatility of the breed, the stamina, the temperament and the hunting ability. They're a hunt point retrieve, so they will do everything. Now I was shooting up there a few weeks ago, you haven't got a lot of grouse up there. No, not grouse. But, no. that, but that doesn't matter. No, we've got um, pheasant, partridge, we have duck, uh, woodcock, snipe. A lot of woodcock, fabulous yes, woodcock We have country. fantastic woodcock. And a cocker spaniel is a classic it woodcock is. dog, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. And if that's the type, if you just wanted to work close and in cover and hedges, the cocker's great. But we, we like to do that with them, but we also want to do sort of five or six hours dogging in a day, which is like pushing the young folks back home. And the cockers just, they get tired. Whereas these dogs, they'll work day in, day out. Amazing and every stamina. day they want to go out. So. No, I'm really going to muck this up. This is a German wirehead. Oh, thank goodness for that. Well done. <laughs> thank you for that. German wirehead pointers. Yeah. And why choose those over the GLPs and the GSPs? What, what's, what's good about these? Basically, the coat on them, the protection, and the hardiness of them as well. So if you've got very, very cold, wet, damp weather, it doesn't bother them at all. Whereas, say, a Vizsla or Weimarana or um, sometimes the GSPs, they do sometimes feel the weather a bit. These Everybody them. says these are um, becoming well known in this country, is becoming better in this country as, as deer dogs as well, yes. tracking deer. Yes, Tra they've got very good blood scenting ability. We've got one of our youngsters at the moment is on trial with the police for uh, blood scenting. Um, we've got somebody coming over next week to see one of them for bomb disposal as well. So. Terrific. Well, Jones yeah. family of Monarchy Shoes near Everest, thank you very much and well done. And doesn't Les Jones look the part? Hagrid from Harry Potter, eat your heart out. Now that was real gamekeeping stuff. There's another side 
to the gun dogs at Crufts this year. There's the show side. Let's go and have a look at the cuddly end of gun dogs in the main arena. Golden Retriever is one of the most popular dogs in the world. The breed's eye catching coat is effectively used to attract swimming ducks and entice them along the streams into netting traps. Red white setter is similar to the Irish setter but differs in having a more powerful, broader head and having a less prominent. Well, we've seen two sides to gun dogs so far there's the Basque gamekeepers classes, there's the show ring side, and then there's the kennel clubs working gun dog section. Let's go over and have a look at those. <laughs> we've got the gun dog working certificate going on in the background. Can you tell me a little bit about that, please? We in the kennel club decided that there was a gap there were a lot of people who work gun dogs in the field who would like some accreditation for them but they don't in fact want to go as far as working in running in actual field trials so what it is it's an intermediate certificate for people who want some form of accreditation for their gun dog the problem with working gun dogs is that everybody sees the professionals with the finished article. The chap who, or the lady who wants to actually learn how to make it, the dog come back, how to make it sit, how to make it stay, how do you get it to retrieve, these are the sort of issues that we felt needed to be addressed and this is what we are in fact addressing in this ring of the moment. Now in the weeks leading up to Crufts we visited a gun dog training school in Sussex and met with two owners looking for success in the gamekeeper's ring. There was Sass and her Labrador Oliver, and Lynn and her Weimarana Dilly. For one of them in particular, it's a huge occasion because she's not only a first-time shower, but a first-time dog owner. David Wright went along to see their preparation under the watchful eye of Tania Stapley, who knows a thing or two about crafts. At Ashburnham Gun Dogs, just outside Battle in Sussex, they know all about the exhilaration of appearing in the gamekeeper's ring at Crufts. Tanya Stapley's been showing her Hungarian Vizslas and liver Labradors for over 16 years. But it was in 1998 that everything just came together. Well, it was just the day that I can't remember coming home because not only did the Labrador team of three win the best team of pickers up dog in the gamekeeper's ring, but Sophie won the Bitch Challenge Certificate in the Hungarian Vizsla Breed Ring. And it was just um, one of those times when you, you just, I can't believe now, I'm getting quite sentimental even thinking about it now, that, that she won it. And just, just one of those stunning days that, how lucky, I mean, it was just so lucky to be able to experience that. And I suppose it's the excitement of that which I try and pass on to people, nevertheless much more so in the gamekeeper's ring, uh, where you've got this wonderful atmosphere. You've got all people coming from all over the country with their gun dogs, who we know have been working them as the dogs are born to do. They've got DNA imprint in them to do certain things like hunt, point, retrieve. Um, and it's just lovely. The gamekeeper's ring is a super place to be. And of course it is where Crufts started out with the um, the old gamekeepers vying for attention, my dog's better than yours, etc, etc. And I expect in those days perhaps they even had a little competition to see whose dog worked the best, I don't know. But it was a jolly good way of getting, making sure that your bitch mated with a good stud dog. It's evident that the energy that Tanya brings to her gun dog classes rubs off on her pupils. Her Saturday morning class is full of enthusiastic owners and dogs keen to be put through their paces, whether it's hunting, or retrieving. Tanya thinks the way they split the classes and rotate the disciplines through the morning means that it's a highly productive method of teaching. We have a unique training system, we think we have anyway, and the format being that we have four teachers and four groups classes every Saturday morning and each class then rotates around the teachers so you have half an hour with each teacher. Not only that, but on every Saturday of the month, there's a different discipline. So in actual fact, it takes you 16 weeks 
to do the same lesson back with the same teacher. But you have to be pretty dedicated because it is every Saturday. It's done for love and we, we just enjoy it. I just feel the satisfaction of seeing people who can't handle a dog or the dog hasn't got the faintest idea what it's meant to be doing. Suddenly, a year later, they can even be um, going to the gamekeeper's ring at Crufts and showing their dog because they have qualified on a local shoot by beating or picking up. Two of today's dogs will be showing in the gamekeeper's ring at the weekend. There's Sass Drury and her black Labrador Oliver, or Thurbigen Nifty Nigel to his kennel club friends. It's the second time they will have appeared. Um, I have a class of 23, we got into the cut of seven, which I was really pleased with. It's the first show we've ever done, so um, I was thrilled to bits with that, yes. And I think we were being eyed up for fourth place, but um, a yellow Labrador got it. So do you no, think he's come on in the past 12 months? <laughs> so do you no, think he's good. come on in the past 12 months? Um, as far as um, gun dog work's concerned, yes, he has. He's a bit lackluster today because he's been picking up all season, so it's much more exciting to pick up birds than it is all the stuff done. These. But uh, yes, he has. He's much uh, much more obedient. I can have him off the lead all the time now. He runs in once or twice, but that's you know it's not too bad. Yes, he's definitely come on. He's three and a half now. So tell me about the Crufts experience. What was it like for you? Um, which I had no idea what to expect. I'd never been to Crufts in my life before, so um, I hadn't a clue. But it was really, it was really good fun. It was a lot more open and airy than I thought. I thought it'd be really noisy, and it wasn't. Everybody was really friendly, particularly in the gamekeeper's ring, because we're all sort of got a cause there, haven't we? So, uh, no, it was, it was excellent, really good. That, that's why I want to do it again, because it was... Um, and it's just really nice to show your dog off, because wouldn't, I would not get the opportunity to go to Crufts if it wasn't for the fact that we, uh, we're a working dog in, in the gamekeeper's ring. And what about so, your background? Have, I mean, were you involved in shoots before? Uh, no, no, this is the first time. But we started um, picking up last season, obviously, otherwise we couldn't qualify for Crufts. And it's the first time we'd ever done it. I, know, I mean, I bought the dog as a pet dog. <laughs> I thought, now what shall I do with it? Oh, I know, I'll take it to gun dog training because it's a Labrador. And it's just gone from there, really. And uh, I'm, yes, I'm amazed that we've actually got to crafts. Excellent, yeah. And then there's Lynn and Dilly the Vimarana. Unbelievably, Dilly is Lynn's first ever dog. And after a busy season with the local shoot, she's proved herself worthy of going to crafts. It's the... Deer Park Syndicate that I go on. Um, Tanner invited me and it's been most enjoyable, it's lovely. And she suggested I entered to leave to Crufts. How did you feel about that? Very excited but nervous. <laughs> so this is going to be your first time? Yes, I've never first entered time. a dog show before. You've never been to a dog show? No. <laughs> so in the deep end. And even though it's the first time for Lynn, She's got her sights set high. I'd like to win it. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> because Tanya is able to give her students access to her local shoot, it means people who would otherwise never have dreamed about working their dog have a chance to see their animals' instincts come to life. The Ashburnham gun dog classes and ethos seems to make sense. They give the owners the skill to discover their dog's potential and the owners get a chance to see what their dogs are truly made of. Well, now we've got a chance to actually catch up with the Ashburnham gang here at Crufts. How did you do? Uh, didn't come anywhere, but just had a very enjoyable day. You enjoyed it? Lovely, <laughs> lovely day. Is that? Same, yes, we did. Same. lovely day, yes. Didn't come anywhere, but he's loved it. Okay, he, yeah, yeah, with, he enjoys Liz, it. Liz, Liz got Dilly here. Who, this is um, Oliver. This is Oliver. Oliver, right. or Thurbidgeon's nifty Nigel. <laughs> <laughs> Pauline, how about you? Know, no, we didn't come anywhere either, but uh, the dog performed very well You're today. You're all looking so happy. Yeah, don't mind, we've had a yes, time. <laughs> we don't, I don't, we, we, I don't do showing, we don't no, either. No, okay. just, we just do this once a year and we come just because it's good fun. Charlie, are you yeah. proud of it? Oh, absolutely. I think they've done really well. I've just told those two off because they got themselves in a corner. <laughs> but I can't really speak because I was just going to go out and buy myself a red rosette because I didn't come anywhere either. <laughs> but lovely day. Um, always lovely company. Great place to come, see dogs, take time out. And I'm really, really proud of them. And I pointed out, especially Lynn being a first time person, with a two and a half year old Weimarana, not only has she gone on a shoot, but she's gone to Crufts in two and a half years and she's never had a dog before. It's just amazing, isn't it? Absolutely amazing. Well done. Sass, Paulie and Tanya, thank you very much indeed and well done. Thank you.
Well, you might think that this year feels a little bit different from others with everything that's been talked about in the press, but not a bit of it. And I'm pleased to say that I'm joined by Caroline Kisco, Secretary of the Kennel Club. What do you think of the show so far? Well, it's certainly been busy, hasn't it? Um, I think it's going really, really well. Um, I think all of the, the sort of concerns that we had before the show started, they've all melted away. We've got loads of people coming in, hugely popular on the internet. Um, the, the radio station, everything, it's all a great success. Loads of shopping going on. I mean, if, you, if you speak to any of the traders, they're all very happy as well. So with that and the fabulous dogs that we're seeing, I think it's really going well. Have you been over to the Hall 5, the Basque Gamekeeper's Ring yeah, yet? Yeah, it looks fabulous, doesn't it? I mean, as usual, it looks really great. I think the fact that um, they're really concentrating on fitness as well, as always, because obviously they are active working dogs. But I think the new idea of actually bringing in some work to what they're doing is fundamental, actually, because uh, we all know that with the change in the docking law, uh, we can't continue, we won't be able to continue to see the, the newly bred undocked puppies coming into the show unless they're exhibiting their working prowess. So those sort of factors, the, the, the minor changes that we're beginning to see in that area are very important to, if we're going to continue with those classes going forward. Caroline Kisco, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Frank Geraghty, breeder from South Suffolk. We are looking at Spaniels, this is what you breed. Now, what's happening in the ring right now? Well, also the judges just had a look at the gamekeepers, uh, Springer Spaniels. So Springer Spaniels owned by the gamekeepers, and um, we've seen them obviously have a look, uh, walk around the ring, except to show that they're obviously in physically uh, good nick. And that's which, that's Gaina yeah, Bailey, doyen yeah. of, of gun dog judges. In, indeed, yes, My indeed. Goodness. But you don't get more kind of more of a stamp on the breed than that, do you? No, no. And of course, that's a lady there who knows exactly what she's looking for. Um, you know, comes from the working side of things and. Uh, uh, looking at the two dogs, first and second, she certainly made the right decision today. Those are typical examples of uh, well-bred and muscled up and fit-looking English Springer Spaniels. Something that can get in undercover and flush birds out. Something that can punch into that tight, horrible stuff that's low-lying, you know, and as you say, push those birds out. Frank Garrity, thank you very much indeed. Um, we've just seen you judging uh, the Springer Spaniel, English Spring Spaniel classes. Um, there have been some changes this year. What, what were, were you looking for this year? I'm looking for fitness as much as possible for the breed standard. But if I think the breed standard dogs are not fit and don't look as if they can do a day's work, then I'd prefer to get something that is really, really fit. I'm looking for muscle as well. Um, after we've done the awards, then, as you can see, we're doing the retreat but they don't have to retrieve. In fact, the third dog in the Spaniels, English Springers, didn't, didn't want to. But then we understand that they're gamekeeper's dogs. They're used to retrieving birds, game of some kind, and a canvas dummy in an environment like this is very strange, very different. I'm here with Di Stevens of Willembryer Labradors in Sussex, and she's feeling pretty pleased with herself. Di, why are you feeling pleased with yourself? Uh, we've just been lucky enough to win a class in the gamekeeper ring and that was Labrador Retriever bitch pick her up, picking up and beating. So um, it was a nice big class, very, very happy indeed. You must be over the moon. I am, I am. We won two years ago and for her to now win at six, I'm really, really thrilled. Now it wasn't all you, was it? Jade took part in this as well. It's mostly her. <laughs> it's and mostly it, wasn't, her. it wasn't all luck. You said you were lucky enough to win. It wasn't actually luck, was it? Uh, there's an element of luck to it. If the dog, if the judge doesn't happen to like the sort of dog you've got, you're out of there. But what sort of work do you have to put into this to get to this level? Well, the gamekeeper ring is a little bit unique because um, basically you have to qualify your dog through working it to be able to bring it here and show it. So unlike the showing classes where you qualify for showing through showing, you have to have done a season's picking up at least or beating with your dog. And your gamekeeper or shoot captain has to sign to say that you have genuinely been a useful member of his team for at least a full season. That then qualifies you to come and be in the ring and then the class is judged on a confirmation basis um, according to the taste of the judge, who is a working person. Well, Jade's done a few more than one season, hasn't she? She has. She's done five full seasons and um, she's also done several trial seasons and she also runs in working tests, so she's a bit of an all-rounder. She's a remarkable, remarkable lady. Um, her family, her breeding, has she, have any of them done this before? Um, yes, her grandfather um, 
won this class four years ago, uh, and that was before it was divided dog and bitch. So um, that was a wonderful day, winning a huge trophy um, in an enormous class. So they then decided, this is silly, 56 dogs in a ring is just unmanageable. So they've split it dog and bitch. So we've won alternate years since then. So uh, hope for many more. <laughs> Di Stevens, thank you very much indeed. It's a pleasure, thank you. Now it's not all about dogs here, you know, it's also about shopping for your dogs. David Wright paid a visit to one stall holder who reckons she's got plenty to offer the discerning dog owner. We try and fill a hole in the market because most of the stuff comes in from China now and lots of people have got odd shaped dogs so therefore we can fit the coat or the collar to the dog and we can make it however they want it. For Anne Rees, Crufts is the most important and busiest show of the year. It's the perfect place for her to sell her bespoke dog collars, leads and coats direct to the public. Anne, who's based in Kent, started her business 20 years ago, making hand-stitched leather bridles and head collars. But three years ago, she realised the potential for giving dog owners the same sort of durable products, ideal for the hardest working gun dog. I think um, not long ago, men didn't really even entertain the idea of putting a coat on their dog. But they're now thinking that um, if after it's been, had a day's working where it's got cold, been in a, maybe an icy pond, um, when they put it back in the Land Rover at the end of the day and they maybe go and have a drink, it's quite nice to put a coat on their dog and keep it warm and then it's much better for its joints and everything. Um, and I think people are beginning to come around to that idea now. Mel Bowen works alongside Anne. He joined the business when he retired and this ex-police dog handler knows plenty about looking after a working hound. I was a, a, a member of the Kent Police dog unit for 32 years before I retired a couple of years ago. I've worked German Shepherds, I've worked Springer Spaniels, I've worked working Cocker Spaniels in both drugs capacity and explosives. So I, I do know a little bit, uh, quite a lot of, about dogs. And also before I retired, I was a Kent Police breeding manager as well, breeding all their dogs for them. So I am very much into the doggy world. And uh, when I retired, I came in to help Anne quite a lot, you know, and now it's become a full-time job with her, really, and I love it. Because everything is handmade, Anne and Mel have to put a lot of time in in their small workshop to build up the levels of stock they need. You don't want to be running out of this year's must-have item right in the middle of the show. Um, we probably start before Christmas, because our last big show before Christmas is the LKA up in um, the NEC as well. As soon as that's over, we're more or less getting geared up for crafts. And we've got a website as well, so all the orders we're doing at the same time. So we're doing the stock in between all the orders. So it's, it's full on, it's full on. And we'll be probably sewing right up to the day before we go away, thinking, we've got to get that done, we've got to get that done. It's uh, now day three of crafts. You must be losing count. How's it all going? Well, it all blurs into one, really, after a while, the, the three days. But no, it's been very good. It's been very good. I think the first couple of days were slightly less busy than last year, with, with not quite so many people, but on the whole it's been fine. Is Gun Dog um, Day a big day for, for Stand Gun Dog Day? Gun Day is a great day for us, we love it. I mean, the, to be honest, the, day, the days that aren't so good for us are probably like Toy Day, but Gun, Gun Dog Day is great, <laughs> because um, they come along and they get a lot, a lot of the toweling coats to, to dry their dogs off at the end of the day, and um, we just seem to click very well with the Gun Dog people somehow, so uh, yeah, it's a good day, good day. Of course, Crufts wouldn't be Crufts without Mr Crufts. Peter Purvis is presenting the Kennel Club's coverage at the NEC. What a delight to see you here, Mr. Crafts. <laughs> well, it's, it's nice to be thought of that. I'm probably the least expert of the dog people here, but I'm fairly experienced in television. You're, so that's a... <laughs> you're the most well known, which is the best thing. What, what, what are you doing here this year? Well, you know, we've got this live webcast uh, from the Kennel Club, which is streamed all day. Starts at 8.30 in the morning, goes right the way through until uh, the show finishes at night, the end of the group judging. And I'm commentating on most of that. <laughs> I don't do the mornings, so I'm, I can't do all day. I don't get it right all the time. I, I know I misnamed about half a dozen dogs yesterday in one of the events. Only because you, know, you get these commentary sheets, you know, oh great, that's fine. They're all in the wrong order. Oops. <laughs> and you don't have time when all you can see is a little dog running around to check whether the handler is the... It's, it, unless you know them all intimately, and I don't. I know some of them, but I don't know them all. So that gets difficult. Well, it's great fun. Seat of the pants stuff. I love it. There's been so much bad press about dogs. And it's unfair. 
because the majority of dog owners are not like that. There are some terrible breeders, of course there are. They are a very, very small minority. The majority of the people who come here to show their dogs, they want their dogs to be fit, they want them to be healthy, they want to be near the standard as they can make them, and they are concerned that their breed is a delight. That's what it's about. No one wants to breed a rotten dog. That's what this is about. Peter Ferris, thank you very much indeed for talking to us. Thank you. Well, it's been a very busy day for all our competitors, a very busy year getting ready for Crufts. Now it's time to hand out the silverware and keep an eye out for the Random Cup presenter. Most of the silverware taken care of, but the biggest trophy of them all, the North Esk Memorial Trophy, is still to be decided for the, the best gun dog in the gamekeepers' classes. Go Let's go over to the main arena and see who's going to win it. It's a young dog, he's 18 months old, and believe it or not, this is the first time that either the dog or the handler has come to a city, a real country bumpkin. Next in the ring is kiddle clad Bertie. Another 21 month old dog, another young dog, who is a Cocker Spaniel. And equally a country bumpkin. Rummenwell Knight, Labrador Retriever, Mrs. Knight. From the Eastern High State in Hanks. Or Mrs. Knight's husband is a head gamekeeper. Black Toff Fallen Angel of Gilling Grange is a seven year old flat court retriever. Long Watney State, Leicestershire. And again, the owner is a head gamekeeper. So quite a prestigious estate and a high title. Next to the ring is Must Work Make a Day. Two and a half year old bitch and her handler, Gwen Jones. The Jones family is a great patron of the BAC ring and it's wonderful to see the family tradition continuing. And last but not least, Mr. Dylan Thomas, retired gamekeeper. And very aptly, Dylan Thomas has a Welsh Spaniel, a Springer Spaniel. Next in the ring is Mrs. Gaynor Bailey. If you'd put your hands together for her, please. Again, is a well-traveled judge, both of show dogs and in the sporting field with field trials and tests. And she has a, a real keen eye for a working gun dog. Each of these dogs, as I said before, has worked 12 months in the sporting field and the build-up to Crufts. 
and are perhaps more muscular, leaner than their more pampered pedigree counterparts. Mr. Dylan Thomas, who's last year's winner, has been asked to show his dog up the ring. A dog, 18 months old, is taken to the show ring like a true veteran. Beautiful condition. Again, we'll, we'll pick one dog and draw it forward. And I'd love you all to, to clap spontaneously when that happens. <laughs> Tense moments, final deliberation. It's a wonderful German wildhead pointer, Gwen Jones, fantastic. I'm delighted to say that today we have Mr. Lee Redfern, who's a Her Majesty the Queen's head gamekeeper from Windsor Estate, and Mr. Phil Hardaway, who's a vice chairman from the Kennel Club, who will jointly present the prizes. Congratulations, Gwen. We're very, very proud of you. Fantastic. You must be pretty happy about that. Yeah. Well done. Well done. What, what, what did you think of all that? It was very scary to start <laughs> off with. Then once you get into the ring, you're just there with your dog, so it's quite, it's okay. Where there are a lot of people, a lot of flash guns going off, and very, very great many people. Yeah, right? there's quite lots a... of people in there. And how did Roxy cope with all that? Um, she's fairly okay. The noise gets scared her a bit, but she's all right after a while. Well, she's a winner, which is yeah. fabulous. <laughs> have you have you won that before? Um, no, last year we came second in it, so. That's terrific. Yeah. No, tremendous news. That's really good. Good news. You're going to go back to West Wales. They're going to be quite happy with you yes, there, aren't they? Yes, very happy. I suspect so. Yeah, <laughs> Gwen James, thank you very much. Well done. Thank you. What a day it's been. The building is emptying out behind me. The end of Gundog Day, Crufts 2009. What a victory for West Wales, for Gwen Jones of the Monachty shoot. And what a victory for Dock Breeds. We've had an amazing time here. I hope we've brought some of it to you.